Let's see if this thing is working. Hi. Okay, I, I, I wasn't going to do this, but I watched Chris's videos. This is concerning Shani for Christ. I watched Chris's videos, and I just think that it's about time that I get my side of the story out for a change. Because I noticed that um, Jason has been making comments about things he doesn't even understand or know about. But first of all, um, I just want to say to Chris that, yeah, you screwed up some things, but you were a good father. And I just want you to know that um, before you came along, Zachary didn't smile much. I mean, he didn't respond to people. And uh, he really, those boys really loved you, Zachary especially. But he, it was like the light turned on when you came into his life. And I just want you to know that. Nobody should ever question what a good father you were. You were a good provider, too. You did the best you could. I mean, I know you don't make that much money, but you did the best you could. And she sat there year after year, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and, bigger and um, wouldn't work. I understand that, but I just needed to thank you for being a part in the boys' lives. Shannon has told you many things. I tried to warn you, her father and I tried to warn you about her before, but of course you wouldn't listen. She was your wife. I understand that. Jason's not going to listen either. He's going to have to find out the hard way, but nobody's abused Shannon, okay? That is her M.O. She uses that with everybody. She did it with Douglas. She's done it with you. She's done it with her sister, her brothers. Everybody in her life has always treated her this way. And this is why she's so crazy. I mean, it covers for her mental illness. And she knows she's mentally ill. And she knows what she's supposed to do to help that mental illness. But she chooses not to. She chooses not, she chooses to use it as an excuse to do what she does. And I don't have to explain what she does. I mean, she makes these outrageous videos all the time. She's always crying and carrying on and, and always, always, you know, always something negative. Her, since she was 16 years old, I don't want to say her entire life because she was a beautiful child. You know, I mean, she really was a very beautiful child and happy girl. She used to sing and she dreamed of going to Paris. And I noticed the picture in the back of the Eiffel Tower. And that reminds me of Shannon, the little Shannon when my daughter. But something happened along the way. I know what happened. I think you know what happened, Chris, to her. And it wasn't, it was, it, it, it you know, it was unfortunate that all, that she went through what she went through um, when she was 16 years old, but it, it somehow changed her. And ever since then, she has blamed everybody else for all the screw-ups that she makes in her life. She uses it as an excuse that, except when it comes to what happened when she was 16 years old. And I'm not going to talk about it here because it was, it was traumatic what happened to her. Um, and I have to say, as bad as this sounds, something inside of me tells me that maybe it didn't happen the way she said it happened, but something had to have happened for her to have turned out as she has. She has crashed and burned just about every single relationship in her life. And I'm not going to keep this video up for very long. I just want to be able to make my side of the story and make things clear. Um, she's got people like Miss Star and, and a couple of people that, you know, feel really sorry for her. But they don't realize how much she has affected everybody in her life. I mean, every one of her siblings and both of her parents have helped her out over and over and over again. And she walks all over them. She crashes and burns her bridges behind her. This is the last time I am ever that my husband and I are ever going to be able to help her again. I mean, she nearly destroyed us during this last stay when, when you and her broke up. Um, she's got Jason believing that there was abuse. The, um, there was no abuse going on whatsoever. We we bought her clothes. We bought her makeup. We bought her... Uh, she got to use her father's car every single day. Even when she wasn't working, she got to use her father's car, his truck. We, had, we got an SUV that her father used at that time. 
So, I mean, she had a way to work, but she wanted to lay in bed for months. She got fired from her first job for making videos on YouTube, okay? And she knows she's, she had, I gotta blow my nose, I'm sorry. I feel like crying right now. But she knows that she had to take care of her children. She doesn't do that. She expects everybody else to take care of them. That's, that's her thing. So she got fired from her first job. She laid up in the bed for months doing nothing but drinking alcohol and, and um, crying all the time, making everybody miserable. Mostly what she was crying about was because Jason wasn't fully her boyfriend at the time. This is why I couldn't believe, you know, when they she finally did get him. You know, I couldn't believe it when she finally did. But um, she said that she wanted him because he was a millionaire. This is the truth. She wanted him because he was a millionaire and she knew she wouldn't have to work anymore. And that she could just lay around eating, 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 eating. But she will never be able to give up wanting negative um, attention. She thrives on negative attention. She has done this since she was 16 years old. There always has to be some kind of turmoil in her life. And if she doesn't have turmoil, she will create turmoil just to get people to feel sorry for her for some reason. And then those people that feel sorry for her, then she craps on them afterwards. And I think a lot of people, a lot of you YouTubers and from the Christian community have experienced that with her. You figured that out the hard way, like the rest of us. So now, getting back to me and my husband, let me just tell you, while she stayed here, she, she did nothing but sleep in the bed all the time. You know, we did everything we could to provide. I told her, I said, Dad, her, her father had just had his knees replaced and, um, living on blood he he had he ha, he's still taking blood thinners i mean it's only been since october that he had his knees replaced and the first thing she did when he came home from the hospital is walk right into his knee and didn't say anything about it went outside to smoke her cigarettes she was mad at me because she couldn't smoke in my house knowing that i have a heart condition she had to go outside to smoke even though it was my home, you know, I couldn't be around smoke. I can't be around things like that. But she laid up in that room drinking every night. And let me tell you, before we, before she even got settled in, the deal was is that she was going to get a job and she was going to help out with the utilities because we were paying uh, double the electricity, double our water bill. Or actually, our water bill was more than double at times because the boys and her used to take really long showers and whatnot. So all of our utilities, you know, were costing us extra except for cable, of course, because we kept the Internet on. We don't have cable. We have uh, just Internet. And... Um, to save money. I mean, we're just, my husband's 62 years old. He's getting ready to retire. We're just an older couple, you know, going through a lot of health problems right now. But she didn't respect that either, you know. Um, she told Jason that all I ever wanted was to get money from her. And it's like, yeah, you know what? You have to pay for your way. You can't just expect people to support you for the rest of your life. We couldn't do it. We couldn't financially do it. And it was starting to cripple us. Um, we both have a lot of medical bills. I had two heart surgeries. I had abdominal surgery just before Shannon came. And I was rapidly losing weight at the time. I'm, I'm much better now, but I was like going down to skin and bones for a while there because I was so sick after my abdominal surgery. I ended up with a, a bacteria and had to go on antibiotics. And I mean, it was just terrible. Meanwhile, putting up with her stuff, with the crying every night and drinking every night and smoking weed with her kids in the house, terrified that. And then she'd invite people over, um, this one homeless guy, and um, she'd invite him over. And all he, he was, he was actually a meth addict. I know that you didn't do meth, Chris. I'm, I'm positive about that. That's not your, that's not your thing. I'm sorry you had to go through what you had to go through. I really am. Uh, we tried to warn you, 
but you didn't listen. <laughs> but anyway, that's water under the bridge now. I, you know, I don't want to make you feel bad, but you're doing the right thing. It's time for you to just move on with your life and just put her aside. As far as Jason goes, he has threatened my husband. He said he threatened a 62 year old man on blood thinners with two knees just replaced that he'd come over and punch him in the face. And now he's doing this boxing video like he's going to hit you. I mean, what an asshole. This is a man of God. You know, the only justice out of this is that Jason's going to find out on his own what she's all about. When somebody gets married, they're supposed to be focused on their husband, their new husband. They're in love. They're supposed to be happy, you know, and she has kids, too. She's supposed to be focusing on them. But no, she's got to make videos about her ex-husband eight months after you guys have been, you've been divorced. I mean, this is just ridiculous. But. That's Shannon's M.O. This is what Shannon does, and she does it well. She destroyed Doug the same way. Doug and his mother were abusive. His mother, actually her first husband, the father of her children, because I know a lot of people think that you were the boy's uh, biological father, which he's not. Anyway, the father of her children's mother had uh, multiple myeloma, and Shannon did nothing but make her life a living hell. The woman had to stay in her bedroom all the time. I finally got fed up with it. I'm going to be honest with you. I finally got fed up with it. And I said, this is it. I can't put up with this anymore. I tried to ask her to get things cleaned up. Let me tell you something. My husband gave up the bedroom to sleep in the spare room in a smaller bed. And I slept on the couch downstairs the whole time she was here. So they, they could have the master bedroom. And that master bedroom, a stench started coming out of it. And when I opened the door, it was at least two feet deep full of garbage, food, clothing. God knows what else was in there. Urine. We found urine in the container. Um, And William lied about it. And she says, William never lies. Well, William does lie. You're the one who was spanking him because he lied about the urine. But it was spilt all over the floor. It took us weeks to get that. Oh, it's been three months since she's been gone. Maybe more. Well, let's see. It was Christmas Eve when she when she was when the cops got her out. And the cops know us, by the way. The police in Duluth know my husband and I. They know her, too, all too well, because they constantly had been called, had calls for her in the past. You know, she lost her kids. If it wasn't for Chris, she wouldn't have those kids right now. And that's the truth. He is telling the truth on that. Now, I don't know why you had that relationship with what's-his-name's girlfriend there. You know, I don't know why you did that. Maybe, but I'm not going to judge you for it. I'm not going to. I mean, you went through hell with her. But um, all I know is, is that her husband has made threats about us. He's even kind of poked a stick in there. It poked the anthill about, what about what your parents did to you? What about your mother? Well, the only thing he heard was the day that she had her headphones on and I went in and I pulled them off her head and I pulled her hair a little bit. I didn't like yank it off or anything like that. I She wouldn't listen to me. I was trying to get her to clean that room up. This, I'm telling you, the stench was horrible. No one should live like that. And um, she was like, oh, you give it to you know, like she usually does. You see her on the videos. And I was done with it after that. I was like, that's it. You're getting the hell out of here. I'm not putting up with this anymore. I shouldn't have to. My blood pressure was sky high. It took me a good two months to get my blood pressure down after her staying here. The doctor was even like, don't, you can't do this. You know, I had two heart surgeries. I have a pacemaker defibrillator over here. I have a portacath over here. You know, I mean, I'm getting worked up. This is why I didn't want to make this video, but I think I deserve to be able to tell my side of the story too. All this, all, all the rest of this aside, she, she, the, the police came over to the house and they made her leave. William said that I threatened to kill him when the police were over at the house and 
texted his mother that, which was, was it was William being an asshole, being a little asshole. I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. He was being a little asshole, just like he did the time he pissed all over the floor in his, gr in his grandfather's room. I was a pediatric nurse for almost 37 years of my life. I would never tell a child I'm going to kill them. I would never do that, and especially my grandsons. But it doesn't matter. Shannon gets away with saying whatever she wants to people and getting them all riled up and worked up. I mean, hell, even while she was here and she wasn't doing well on getting the noose around Jason's neck, she was flirting with G-Man. I, 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 remember, I remember clearly how she was wanted to be with G-Man. She talked to me about it almost every night. But he was too smart for her, thank God. He even told her, you need to get out of your mama's house. Of course, she wasn't going to have that because she'd have to go get a job and she'd have to go actually, you know, pay bills. She didn't want to pay nothing. I asked her for money to help pay. I asked once she gave me $140 with her first job and that went towards the heat, the electric and the water. So split that into three. OK, less than 50 bucks. Not bad. You know, she could have been paying a lot more in a house that she lived in. When I think back in hindsight, I should have just, instead of bringing her to our house, I should have just said, Shannon, the house is yours now. Because we actually went, my husband and I went over there and cleaned her house out. Oh my God, talk about a mess. The bedroom up in the boys' room, you get halfway up the steps and you could smell the urine coming out of there. For some reason, they thought it was okay to piss on the floor, okay? They thought that was okay. And this, I don't like talking like this, by the way, but I'm fed up to here with all of this stuff and her making videos. And it hurts. It, it hurts really bad. It hurts to know that my grandchildren have to live like this. It does. It hurts me real bad because I know my other two grandchildren are living a decent life. They have two parents that love them very much and they're happy in the way a kid is supposed to be. She's in the bathroom right down the hall here smoking on her hookah or whatever you call it smoking weed with her boys down the hall william told me one day he said that's got to stop he goes she used to do that when my dad was there talking about you chris he said but it's got to stop and he wanted to put a stop to it and i think the only way he knew how to do it was to try to get out try to get out of here and make her take responsibility. He's smarter than you think. He might lie, but he's smart. He knew what he was doing. He didn't want to lose her again either. I mean, the boys really do love her. If she could only just see that, you know, and be satisfied with that. But she's got to have that negative uh, attention. Always just this negative attention. But anyway, um... When the police came over to get her out of the house, yes, it was Christmas Eve, but she was screaming and yelling and causing a lot of trouble. She took, um, instead of cleaning the room, she took and she shoved a good portion of it under her father's bed, okay? I mean, my husband works hard. We don't have the, the greatest house in the world. It's Our house is, you know, over 100 years old. But he takes a lot of pride in trying to keep things nice in it, you know? And uh, he didn't deserve that. He didn't deserve that at all. We didn't do anything. She came to us after you left her, Chris. She came to our house, and I didn't know what to do because of the kids. But if I think in hindsight, I, I should have made her stay there at, at the house that you guys were renting because she could have gotten a job, and she'd probably still be there, well, until... She roped Jason in. He's going to find out. He will find out the hard way. But I'll tell you what, if he threatens me or my husband again, he just needs to know that the D Duluth Police Department know about them, both of them. We have it written down. There's a paper trail, and he better watch his step. I have pictures of what the room looked like 
I'm not going to show them here, but I have hung on to them in case anything else, you know, happens. But now she's in Pennsylvania. She should just go on with her life. She should just go on with her life and stop making these crazy ass videos and trying to get everybody all stirred up and, and, and just expanding the hatred. She's married now. She's married to this guy. She's supposed to be focusing on how much they love each other, but she won't do that. It's heartbreaking. I apologize to my followers or, or um, my subscribers for this video. This is something that had to be done. I'm not going to keep this video up here, and I promise you that I'm going to go back to my garden content, and I'm not going to ever make a video like this again, because other than what happened with my daughter, our lives are, are pretty much normal. But it had to be done, because she won't listen. And I just wanted um, her new husband to know that he needs to stop threatening us. I mean, threatening a 62-year-old man who had his knees replaced and has to take blood thinners. And his heart isn't doing too well either. He happens to have AFib. You don't want to know what I think about you right now doing that. You don't want to know. But I can let it go. Because I can take a little bit of pleasure in the fact that you're going to find out the hard way. And I'm not going to say I told you so. But you're going to hear it in your head. But anyway, that's all I got to say. That's my side of the story. Um, Chris was a really good father. I don't believe he raped her. I don't believe it for one minute. She has lied about this stuff over and over again with other people. And um, I don't believe he abused her in any way. He's never been an abusive person as long as we've known Chris. We've known him for several years. He's never been abusive that I know of. I mean, I just don't. I mean, it really was when she explained that he raped her, it was so out of character that I was like, it's, you know, I didn't, I didn't buy it, but I wanted to, I wanted to stay on her side because she's my daughter. She didn't go and, and even uh, get a police report on it for like a month or so. She didn't even go to get um, STD checks until several months after that. So, I mean, who's telling? Who's telling the truth here? I mean, this is miserable. I kind of wish I didn't make this video now, but it has to be said. So I hope you got the message, Jason and Shannon. Good luck to you. I hope that you get the help that you need, uh, finally. But it won't be coming from your family anymore. We've all, we're done. We're through. Just want you to know that. I don't take pleasure in it either. I think it's horrible how things went down. You would feel the same way as a mother. Or maybe not. You seem to put yourself before your kids all the time. Right now, Jason's only seeing it, the honeymoon phase. He'll see what you're really about. Okay, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Take care, everybody.